The week four notes um, and lecture video are going to be much shorter than any of the other ones. Um, we just have four pages, um, five pages of notes. Um, and there's only two objectives in this section. So a quadratic equation is a quadratic expression that's equal um, to some number. Typically uh, we write it as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. A, B, and C represent real numbers, and A is not zero. So it has to have um, a variable squared term to be a quadratic equation. And it couldn't have um, any higher exponent, like it couldn't have an x cubed or x to the fifth power that would um, make it a different type of equation. So the zero factor property of um, an algebra says that when you take the product of two numbers and it's equal to zero, then at least one of them has to be zero, right? If you multiply any two numbers and it equals zero, one of those numbers or both of them must be zero. <coughs> so if I have x plus four multiplied by x minus 10 and that equals zero, then I know that either x plus four must be zero or x minus 10 must be zero. So that's what we do to solve this is we write each one of them equal to zero, but we're trying to find x. So it's a little bit more work. We have to solve, so subtract four on both sides, add 10 on both sides, and we get x equals negative four and x equals 10. So typically you will have two answers for quadratic equations. You might only have one answer or you might not have any answers, but the most you'll have is two. With b, x plus 11 times x plus 1, I'm going to set x plus 11 equal to 0. Subtract 11 on both sides, so I get that x equals negative 11. Um, with x plus 1 equal to 0, I subtract 1 on both sides, and I get that x equals negative 1. So you might see, um, you, for here we can just circle our answers, um, but in some textbooks, you might see the answer written in numerical order in the set notation, negative 11, negative 1, with a comma between them. And that's saying that the solution is this set of those two numbers. I just want to mention that because you might see that. Um, C, we have x times x minus 7 equals 0. So we set x equal to 0 and x minus 7 equals 0. Now, there's nothing I need to do with x equals 0 because it's already solved for. That's one of our answers. But if I add 7 to both sides of the x minus 7 equal to 0 equation, I get that x equals 7. And d, 2x times x plus 12 equals 0. Again, I'm going to set the left number equal to 0, or left term, 2x equals 0. And then x plus 12 equal to 0. When I solve for 2x equals 0, I get just that x is 0. When I solve x plus 12 equals 0, I get x equals negative 12. In E, I set, well, it's 3x minus 2 times 5x plus 1. So I'm going to set 3x minus 2 equal to 0, and I'm going to set 5x plus 1 equal to 0. In 3x minus 2, I can add 2 to both sides. So I get 3x is equal to 2, and then divide by 3 on both sides. So one answer is that x is 2 thirds. Um, 5x plus 1 equals 0. I can subtract 1 on both sides, and then I get 5x equals negative 1. Divide by 5 on both sides and I get x equals negative one-fifth. So our solutions are two-thirds and negative one-fifth. Last one like this. Set 9x plus 1 equal to 0. And 4x minus 3 equal to 0. So subtracting 1 on both sides, I get 9x equals negative 1. Divide by 9 on both sides, and we get x equals negative 1 ninth. 
4x minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. <coughs> so 4x equals 3. Then divide by 4 on both sides. So x equals 3 fourths. All right, now we're ready to take it into the next step. Um, so we're going to still use the zero factor property, but first we have to factor it. Um, so we want to factor x squared plus 2x minus 63, and that factors as x plus 9 and x minus 7. And then you take each one, x plus 9 equal to 0, and x minus 7 equal to 0. Solve, and we get x equals negative 9 and x equals 7. B is x squared minus 5x plus 6. So again, we need to factor it first. And that factors to x minus 2 and x minus 3. Set it equal to 0. And we have x minus 2 equals 0, which gives a solution of x equals 2. And x minus 3 equals 0 gives a solution of x equals 3. In C, um, we're still going to factor it, but we can only factor the GCF. So if we take an x out, we're left with x minus 3 equals 0. So we get x equals 0, and then x minus 3 equals 0 leads to the solution x equals 3. So we get two solutions, x equals 0 and x equals 3. D we want to set equal to 0 first. So x squared equals 9. We want to subtract the 9 on both sides. So we get x squared minus 9 equals 0. Then you can factor it. It's a difference of two squares. It's x plus 3, x minus 3 equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative 3. And x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals positive 3. So we get the solutions negative 3 and positive 3. E can be a little tricky because it looks like um, we can just set x, it says x plus 3 times x plus 8 equals x. Um, you can only use the zero factor property if it indeed has one side equal to zero. So we need to um, foil this out and we get x squared plus 8x plus 3x plus 24 equals x. Combine the like terms so we get x squared plus 11x plus 24 equals x. Now subtract x on both sides. So we get x squared plus 10x plus 24 equals 0. Now we can factor and use the zero property. Um, zero property. Zero factor property. <laughs> um, so this is going to be x plus 4 and x plus 6. So we get x plus 4 equals 0. That means that x equals negative 4. And x plus 6 equals 0 means that x equals negative 6. F. Let me clear out some stuff here. Um, Again, it's not equal to 0, so we have to distribute. x times 4x minus 11 is 4x squared minus 44 equals 3. Subtract the 3, so we get 4x squared um, Oh, why did, <laughs> that is not 44, that's 11. Let me start over, I'm sorry. We get 4x squared minus 11x. I think I did that before, too. Now we subtract the 3. So we get 4x squared minus 11x minus 3 equals 0. 
A is not 1, so we use the box method. 4x squared in the top left, negative 3 in the bottom right, multiply together as negative 12x squared. We need factors that are going to add up to negative 11x. No problem, that would be negative 12x and positive 1x. GCF of 4x squared and negative 12x would be 4x. GCF of x and 3 is just 1. 4x squared divided by 4x is x, and negative 12x divided by 4x is minus 3. So our factors are 4x plus 1, or my, yeah, plus 1, and x minus 3 equals 0. We set each one of those equal to 0 and solve. So 4x plus 1 equals 0. If I subtract the 1 on both sides, I get 4x equals negative 1, and then divide by 4, I get x equals negative 1 fourth. x minus 3 equals 0 gives the solution of x equals 3. So our solutions are x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 fourth. Looks like we have two more of these. No, nope, four more. Lots of practice. Um, G, we can take out a, a GCF, and I'm actually going to take out the negative um, because the negative's in the first term. So I get, so we have negative 2y squared plus 72 equals 0. Taking out that negative 2, we get negative 2 on the outside times y squared minus 36 equals 0. So it's negative 2 times y plus 6, y minus 6. That's the difference of two squares. And by now you probably figured out that when you have um, this y plus 6 equals 0, then our answer is going to be y equals negative 6. It's going to be the opposite of the sign in there. And the y minus 6 equals 0 will give us y equals 6. So I'm skipping the step where I set it up as an equation because by now we've seen what happens. H, <clears throat> let's set this equal to 0 first. 6x squared plus 57x equals 30. We subtract 30 on both sides. So we get 6x squared plus 57x minus 30 equals 0. The GCF is 3, so we're going to factor that out. And we get 2x squared plus 19x minus 10 equals 0. Um, if you notice in, in example G, the one we just did, that negative 2 that came out, we don't set that equal to 0 because it doesn't make sense. So um, if you take out a numerical GCF, in other words, it's just a number, um, it doesn't become you don't do anything else with it. Um, so after you do your factoring and you solve, those are your answers. Alright, so we need a box for this one. 2x squared in the top left, negative 10 in the bottom right, and um, that's going to give us a negative 20x squared, and we need 19x from that. So that'll be a positive 20x, and a negative x. The GCF of 2x squared and negative x is x. GCF of 20x and negative 10 is 10. So 2x squared divided by x is 2x. Negative x divided by x is minus 1. Check that the signs are all correct, and they are. So we get 2x minus 1 times x plus 10 equals 0. And that GCF we took out doesn't matter. <coughs> um, because the reason is we could take each side and divide it by 3. And then those 3's would be gone. And the right side would still be 0. So you would still wind up with 2x minus 1 
times x plus 10 equals 0. And the solutions for that would be that x is 1 half and x is negative 10. i is x cubed minus 4x, 14x squared plus 49x equals 0. We can take out an x and we're left with x squared minus 14x plus 49. And I recognize this one as a perfect square trinomial. It's x minus 7 squared equals 0. So my solutions are just x equals 0 and x equals 7. You'll have two x equals sevens, but since it's the same, we just leave it be as, um, you know, we don't have to list x equals seven twice because it's the same number. J, two x plus five, all multiplied by four x squared plus 20 x plus 25 equals zero. So, um, we're going to use the zero factor property, set each one equal to zero. 2x plus 5 equals zero is going to give us, if we subtract 5 on both sides, we get 2x equals negative 5. Divide by 2, so x is negative 5 halves. So that's one of our solutions. All right, and then the right side, 4x squared plus 20x plus 25 equals 0. This is also a perfect square trinomial of 2x plus 5 squared. And we already know what the solution to 2x plus 5 equals 0 is. It's negative 5 halves. So this negative 5 halves is actually the only answer. We just get it three times. So you'll notice that none of these factor, none of these problems that we factored were um, sum and difference of cubes. That's because with those, um, once you factor those out, they um, don't using the the sum and difference of two cubes formulas. They don't factor any further. So um, we would need more techniques to help us with that. Um, so here are some applications with quadratic equations. But first we want to just get warmed up a little bit. Um, so going back to solving word problems, if we have the length and width of a rectangle whose length is twice the width, and we're using x to represent um, one of the missing measurements. So in this case, um, the length is x and the width is um, or the, tw the length is twice its width, so it must be the, um, the width is x, sorry. So we'll say let the width be the x. So if the length is twice that, then the length is 2x. Two consecutive odd integers. Well, an odd integer, any odd integer can be written as um, 2x plus 1. So 1 is an odd integer, and to get there, you'd put a 0 in for x. So any odd uh, integer can be written as this. So the first one um, would be 2x plus 1, and then if you want the one right after it, it'd be 2x plus 3. The base and height of a trapezoid whose base is three less than five times its height. Well, its height's given as x, um, so it would be five times that would be five x, and then three less would be minus three. All right, so that's just uh, a little review on setting up problems. Um, now we're going to set up and solve them. So set up and solve each problem. Use x as the variable to represent the missing information. The perimeter, perimeter of an equilateral triangle, equilateral means all sides are the same, is 87 feet. Find the lengths of its side. So this would be x plus x plus x equals 87. That's 3x equals 87. Divide both sides by 3 and we get that each side is, let's use our trusty calculator here. 
29. Alright, so that's not a quadratic um, equation that we just used, but it's, a, it's another warm-up exercise. This next one is the length of a rectangle. Okay, let's draw a rectangle. Its length is 9 inches more than its width. So if its width is x, then its length is x plus 9. Its area is 112 inches. Find the dimensions. Well, area is length times width, so it would be x times x plus 9 equals 112. That is x squared plus 9x equals 112. We need to set it equal to 0, so subtract 112 on both sides. And we get x squared plus 9x minus 112 equals 0. Factor it. Remember, you can use your calculator. Put 112 over x in, and um, you'll find that 16 and negative 7 are going to be the numbers that multiply to be negative 112 and if I add up to be 9. So that gives us two solutions. We get x is negative 16 and x is 7. But negatives don't make sense for dimensions. We don't have negative dimensions. So the width is 7 and then the length is 9 more than that. So um, width equals 7 inches. 9 more than 7 is 16. So in this case, we end up getting that 16 again, but it wouldn't make sense to put negative 16, so just be aware of that. If you're talking about time or um, length of something, then it can't be negative. The equation d equals 1 half n times n minus 3 gives the number of, diag of diagonals d for a polygon with n sides. Find the number of sides for a polygon that has 90 diagonals. So if we substitute 90 in for D, we get 90 equals 1 half N times N minus 3. Well, we need to find what N is. So let's get rid of that 1 half, first of all. Uh, we don't want to have fractions. So we multiply both sides by 2. We'll get 180 is equal to n times n minus 3. No more 1 half. So that's uh, n squared minus 3n equals 180. We want to set the one side equal to 0. So we want to have n squared minus 3n minus 180 equals 0. Then we're going to factor this. We need factors of 180 that add up to negative 3. Factors of negative 180 that add up to negative 3. And those are um, negative 15 and positive 12. So we get that it could be n equals 15 or n equals negative 12. Okay, but you can't have negative 12 um, sides. So the answer is uh, 15. The sum of a number in its square is 132. So, um, oh, we're supposed to be using x for the missing number. So x plus x squared, that's its square, is 132. Let's write it in the right order and subtract that 132 to get it equal to 0. And we just need the um, factors that will multiply to be negative 132 but add up to be 1 because there's no um, number in front of x that means it's a 1. Well, those you can use your calculator like I showed you before, um, but you're, you're going to get x plus 12 and x minus 11. So we get x equals negative 12 and x equals 11. Now, does it make sense to have both of these? It's the sum of a number and its square. Sure, yeah, negative 12 is definitely a number. It makes sense that it's negative. So both of these answers are fine. 
And that is it for um, this lecture.